Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Sam Livecast. How are you today, boys? How are you good? We are good. I'm good. I've just You're cut good. myself. Chief? I have no idea why. I'm bleeding. I, that's just that's just is a regular occurrence. It's, spo- in this it's spontaneous ble- bleeding. That was yes. rude, man. You're like, hey, how's it going, guys? Oh, I'm bleeding. <laughs> I know. Well, I just, I mean, this just happened. Uh, spontaneous bleeding happens all the time. It's true. Did I tell you when it happened to my tongue? Yes. That was I think really we've heard weird. about that. It's ridiculous. That was really weird. Well, and now it just happened to my finger. Why don't you... Somebody, I, su- I suppose I could have cut myself back here prepping, but I don't know. D- people might not know about the tongue thing, so... My when, tongue here. Huh? Yeah. Right in the middle, like where you would get pierced. Mm-hmm. Where I don't have a piercing. <clears throat> just started bleeding one day. I mean, like I'm sitting around watching something on TV, and I'm like... You know, you know the taste of blood, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm, Metallic. Is there blood? There's blood in my mouth. What? My tongue. What? I go to the mirror and I... My tongue is bleeding. Like, right from the center of it. Hadn't bitten myself. Oh, my God. Is it my... It's my... Well, yeah. Oh, great. My mother-in-law's here. I was told 2 o'clock. Hi, Nana. My mother-in-law's here. Sorry, right, continue. I, I heard 2 o'clock. <laughs> It's only one She subscribes to the rule that if you're on time, you're late. And if you're a half an hour early, apparently you're on time. Yes. At least show the old girl now. She's, She's in back there here with, with us. Show her right there. there. She just say hi, Nana. Nana, walk over closer between the two boys and say <laughs> hi to She goes, everybody. hi, Nana. This is for uh, Jilly. Oh, for Jilly? Oh, wow. She'll be so happy. Thank you. Okay. Well, should we, maybe we should open <laughs> it. I love you, Nana. Max's grandmother just brought him a present for his she girlfriend, did, yes. Jilly. Yes. Should we look at it now, Nana? No, I can't open Jilly's present okay. on air before she gets it. <laughs> That's we true. Can't. Okay, so there I am. I'm looking in the mirror. My tongue has started bleeding. I hadn't bitten myself. I hadn't cut myself. I hadn't forked myself. I'm telling you, nothing, just bleeding. Not like intense, but it wouldn't stop. I show Kelly, and she's like, oh, that's really weird. Our dentist used to live up the street, so we, we call him. He goes, we got to go. I'm going to take you into the shop. Wait, I guess they don't call it the shop. Into the what shop. They, what do they call it? The into office. Into the office. We, we go into the office. Because <laughs> you're made of metal or something. You just go into a shop. And, and he, he, he goes, I have to take a little biopsy of it. Scary. They Scary. take a little biopsy of it. It's like the and Seinfeld. They, George is like, biopsy, biopsy. I know. And then he, he can't do anything with it. So he's got to like put it in a little deal and then send it off to the guys at another shop that determine what it is jeez and the whole in fact the woman that, that just came in my mother-in-law when she found out it was nothing she's like so glad it wasn't cancer <laughs> I, I guess and and <laughs> kelly said to me when she found out she goes you know the one thing i worried about she goes you whistle a lot and what? i was worried that if like you had to have your tongue removed because it was cancerous i wouldn't get to hear you whistling anymore really <laughs> Forget about the fact that I won't be able to talk anymore. <laughs> she was sad that she wasn't that I, she was going to be sad because I wasn't going to whistle anymore. How oh sweet is that? <laughs> and now it's happening here on that finger. What is up with you these I days? Don't know. Man? Totally flipped off the camera, sir. That's oh, weird. you did. No, that's all right. Uh, let's see. Okay, today we're making a warm cabbage salad. Nice. I don't think I've made here before. I know I've made it. I make it a lot. In fact, I made it the other day for some people that came over for lunch. So if you're Super wondering, delicious. we have done this is like 300 episode over 380 episodes yeah and you'd so, think that my organizational system would be better yes. for knowing what i've made occasionally we I come need to get george occasionally we come in and he goes hey I, I, have we done this before and normally we are we're able to go online and find out pretty quickly if we have but and i can't find this, it anywhere which makes me say that we it, haven't done it is there maybe another name it could be under no nothing no warm that's spin- that's what i call oh try warm spinach salad I feel like we've done that. We've done we that. have done that. We've done, okay. we so done this cabbage one. So that maybe that's what we were thinking of. Maybe that's Warm what we're thinking of. Warm spinach salad. Yeah, yeah that's done. not it. Okay. okay. Well, if you want, all so you got to do matter. all you got to do is go to the samlivecast.com and like what Lynn did right there, search whatever you want. Search whatever you want. If put you have a artichoke. steak and you want to make something with steak, put steak in and anything we've made with that. Hell yeah. Whatever you want. There you go. <laughs> See what comes up. Anything? Yep. Click search. There, I don't have no... Oh, because the words whatever. <laughs> whatever. There you go. <laughs> whatever is in those uh, searches. It's a very sophisticated system. Oh my gosh, let's not even That's watch not that. on there. I don't think it's there, <laughs> no, is it? There's no, a, vid- there's no video of that, right? It's probably just a post. Let's see. Yeah, we, we took off the video because it, so it, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work at all. Wow, it was <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Episode 1 does not exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> Only in our hearts. Hey, uh, 
I went to, so you've heard me talk about um, uh, Javier Placencia. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, arguably one of the most uh, important chefs on the West Coast of the United States right now. Mm-hmm. He has, uh, with his family and his own, many restaurants in Tijuana. Uh, he's now got a, a, a uh, farm-type restaurant that's open seasonally in the Guadalupe Valley. Um, he has a restaurant here in San Diego called Romesco. Went to Romesco Saturday, Friday night with uh, mom and, and Jill and Bruno. Unbelievable Mexican food. Unbelievable. And I'm going to show you this bone marrow I have never in my life, ever. And I'm a bone marrow fan. So we went in and they were really nice and they came up and we sat down and they said, we'd like to do a little tasting menu for you. And that, what you just showed right there, Lynn, was the tasting menu. It was, they had written it out and I asked them if I could have them take a picture of it. Caesar's salad. Caesar salad, tostadas trio, trio yes. pulpo brasas. Uh, uh, octopus. What's mm. fetano? Is that I, a TV? I, don't know. I, can't, I can't read any of that Tre- stuff. Tre- oh, Tretano, uh, maybe? There was. Um, Hobernados. Hobernadores. Yeah. Uh, Tacos Dorados. Think of whatever he was. There was. Beef uh, short rib. There was. Oh. Uh, short rib was stupid good. Surprise something. One of, those is the, one of those is the, um, is the uh, bone marrow. Here's the bone marrow picks. Hold on one sec. Give me one second. One no second. Problem. Take your time. One second. So here's how it comes to the table, right? So this is uh, poor dude. mom and I shared this, which is excellent because she doesn't eat bone marrow. So I, oh, ate it I was going to say, did she? <laughs> and Bruno and Jill got the same thing and Jill didn't eat it. So Bruno and I each got two. So wait, let me just ask you. Th- yes. So that little guy right there, that's a bone. Like that's a hard bone. Right. Right. On the so outside. so this eat- is this is bone out of a cow. OK. And the marrow is what's inside it. And oh, it's really so just like fat. Okay? And is it a, there a specific bone that they take that has yeah, like I think the best marrow the, i want i think it's the, is this what's this is that femur. the femur? femur i think it's, it's the, the femur. femur got it okay so there's a fork sticking out of it the fork is sticking into the bone marrow itself mm-hmm. but here's the crazy part so most restaurants serve this you see the bone you get the bone and it's either like this or they do it show me for a second or they do a long bone and they cut it in half so it's like a canoe mm. and then they roast that half bone canoe in the oven they bring it out and they serve bread with little garlic or whatever, and you spread the bone marrow with a little garlic on the bread, and you take a wow. bite and it's good. Okay, mm-hmm. the bone so, canoe. <laughs> so check this out: the bone is sitting on top of picture, please. It's sitting on top of a sopa. You know what a sopa is? Oh yeah. Sopa it's, is the bait is like a thick, soft corn tortilla. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So you pull up the bone. You push the bone marrow through the bone onto the sopa. Brilliant. And then you put one of these sauces on. So this is is spicy. This is sweet. You can have them together. You can have them separate. I had them together. Um, Sea salt. Lemon juice. And then what you make is you make that. Get out of here. I'm telling you, I have never had bone marrow like that in my life. Is the marrow the dark? Uh, the marrow's the dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the marrow's the... It's like gelatinous. Yeah, there's a, there's a little there. You can see this white up here. Okay. So, that's that's bone marrow. Okay, too. so I was going to say the that's consistency, sauce, right? like Lynn said, is gelatinous. Yeah, so when kind you of. think about... When you, when you, make, when you, when you see a, a roast beef cooked, yeah. there's that fat cap layer on top. Yes. Think the white fat. That's basically okay. what it is. It's Got like it. the worst, most unhealthy thing okay, you can so have. Okay, so it's not like... Yeah. Wait, is bone marrow really fat? Is it? it it's, I'm saying it's like fat. It's it like has fat. to be fat. It has to be horrible for you. It melts. It's so unctuous. It's unbelievable. It's so good. So good. What? The, the, they started off the little Caesar salad thing. Then a trio of tostadas. One of them was um, a seared ahi. One was pulpo, octopus. Yeah. And the other one was abalone. One was sweet. One was spicy. One was just savory, amazing. By itself, I could have eaten that and said, I'm done. This has made me really happy. Wow. And then the bone marrow came, and then more pulled po. Trying to think what the hell else came. I can't remember it's it. Short all. rib. The short rib. There's still a couple other things in there. And the so ladies, good. The so ladies good. didn't touch the marrow? Didn't touch the marrow, thankfully. Interesting. Um, I know where I'm going. Oh, yeah. Wait, okay. Yeah, you if you had go. to choose one for the rest of your life, foie gras or marrow? Foie gras or marrow? I think, mm, well, if it was this kind of marrow, maybe this. I don't know if I could. I love, I love them both. 
I love foie. I think foie is really, really delicious. It's even special, it's man. Illegal. Especially now Ill, that we Ill can't even have here. it. Now we can't have it yeah. in California. It makes it even almost taste better. <laughs> Just that's, saying. That's true. You're right, right? Like the dance of the seven veils, whatever that is. Something illegal. <laughs> it's not supposed to happen. <laughs> totally. Okay, so check this out. Exactly. Tell me what this is. That is a pretzel-like object. Some type of Asian pastry? Is that your guess? Yes. <laughs> Incorrect. Okay. Wait, wait, both of ours? Uh, what'd you say? I say a pretzel-like object. Mm, <laughs> you no. said pretzel-like object. I said no. Asian-like pastry. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the name, and then you're going to tell me what it is. Okay. Is it anything to do with New Orleans? It's a Krogel. A, oh. cro- a croissant you remember what a bagel? Cro- cronut. Yes. <laughs> Krogel. Oh croissant God. bagel. Wow. Where did this stop. come from? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody made that thing. A up. Krogel. I have to say, it looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does, but it, you know what? It just doesn't have that... Na- like, I think part of the popularity of the Cronuts is the yeah. name. It's such like an identifiable, yeah. trendy like name. Cronut. But Krogel, you're like, what? Well, Krogel, I don't know. Krogel, Krogel, what's Cronut that? in the first few days of it was probably, what is that? No, I don't know. I don't know that the Krogel will catch on, but that's I have true. to say that's a good looking When I thought, when I heard that they named it a Cronut, yeah. I was like, there's got to be a better name for it. I, I liked know. it. I like it. But... Oh, it could have been. We'll think about the Dosan, options. Right? It could have been a Crodo, and that's worse. <laughs> a Crodo. A Crodo. I mean, it, right? No, I actually kind of like Crodo a little better. <laughs> Crodo, Cronut. I don't know. I like the nut part of it. Here, I have to read a. I have to read a letter that I got. Hold on. Hello, Sam and staff. My name is Francesca. I'm 30, and I'm not a cook. I've always been intimidated by cooking. Simply by trying too hard. I want to rediscover love, and watching your show has inspired me. I'm going to use what I've learned from you to make sure that I hook him. <laughs> Thank you. This is Francesca. Hold on. There's Francesca right there. Just let me say, Francesca, if you need any um, one-on-one training, I'm here for you. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm only <Jesus>. kidding. <laughs> I'm only kidding. No, she's cute, though. She's very you'll, you'll cute. Find a, you'll find a guy, Francesca. Show her again. I can't imagine that uh, Francesca's going to have trouble finding men, but, no, but especially she's right. with my food. Hey, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I agree though. She, if she can learn to like get a couple good dishes down mm-hmm. and put that on the plate for a guy when she brings them over, mm-hmm. like that's guys love that. Guys love that. Guys want you to make them. Be I able can't to tell make you how many nice guys dinner. have come up to me and said, uh, your food, your style, your recipes and cooking have helped me, uh, win the favor of many women. Wow. Oh yeah. Women like a guy that cooks. They do. I did a thing last night called Collaboration Kitchen. Uh, Lynn, you got some pictures from their website. So <laughs> Collaboration Kitchen is at a place called uh, Catalina Offshore Products, which is a seafood place here in San Diego. They wholesale to, I'd say, seafood to pretty much all, the, almost every restaurant in San Diego. They started this thing four years ago. This is the beginning of the fourth year. Uh, five or six times a year, they have a cooking class, like in the warehouse, ain't pretty, ain't warm, nothing, nothing restaurant like about it, but all the money that people pay. And I think tickets are 80 bucks or something goes to a charity. We gave a nice check last night to, uh, Olive Wood Gardens down in, uh, Oh, sweet. Down in, uh, national city that helps teach kids what real food is like, how to grow it, how to understand it, that kind of thing. Uh, and they've had all kinds of people there teaching, including the great Javier Placencia. This and, is it, right? Yeah. Okay. Including Javier Placencia and a whole bunch of chefs from Baja, and they do some some stuff. The only reason I'm thinking about this is because I start off by saying, you're my class. I want you to take my recipes tonight when you leave and be able to make them. Mm. I know the food that the other chefs here has been great, but I think mine is not will not just be delicious, but also extremely makeable and i think that's one of hopefully one of the things that francesca has latched on to and people that that watch the show I, my stuff is super simple you know what? it's funny that you just said it and i've I don't know why i've never thought of this in my head this is like an online free cooking class it's exactly what it is oh you're right it's a good point want it's a, a free point. cooking class go to samlivecast.com and right. check us out not to mention go to facebook.com slash the cooking guy and tweet us at the cooking guy wait go back to that first picture go to the picture of all the people there let me just let me have a look at that again all the people oh in the on the uh the collaboration yeah. kitchen going back there real quick yeah mm-hmm. that one yeah it was great it was fun except the the people in the front row 
brought all those little kids. I couldn't swear. Oh, man. <laughs> it was rough. Go check them out, Collaboration Kitchen. <laughs> like them and tell them that's in the cooking Collabora- sent you. Collaboration Kitchen does this thing. So when they do it, you can only get tickets through their... There's some ticketing service, but only when they open the doors to it. And um, uh, Tommy Gomes, who's the, the, the... I don't know what his title is it at Catalina, the manager. He's the head fishmonger, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it does a really good job. I think my, the class sold, he goes, the class is going to sell out like in minutes and it sold out in minutes. It's because he like teases it and he pimps it along so much. And the day that they go on sale, he starts, he, he starts, he does this thing. He goes, tick tock, watch the clock. And that means the tickets are about to go on sale. And then when he says they're on sale, people buy them and it sold out like that. It was really? really fun. They all like that. It's a great time. Lots of fun. People, br- they don't have a booze license. So people bring wine. Uh, they share it. It's boisterous. It's loud. He stop, He takes a break in the middle and he takes a giant, I guess it was a tuna, cuts it up. People have sashimi right there standing in line right off the fish. It's really fun time. And all the money goes to charity. It's fantastic. As opposed to my cooking classes that go to my own personal charity, me. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. My classes are smaller and intimate. <laughs> all right. I want to make something. I want you to make Maybe. something. Okay, let's go hit it. Warm cabbage salad. Simple concept. One, two, three, four, five ingredients, I think. Wow, was that my stomach? Yeah, man. Like, Holy are you hungry? I've been doing that all day. Okay, so these are mushrooms. Uh, this is bacon. You didn't need to see that happen, right? It was just takes too long. It was boring. Bacon, diced up, cooked, and now ready to go into this when it gets to that point. I've left a little bit of the bacon grease in the pan, and now the mushrooms are gonna go in. We're gonna cook the mushrooms. I like to break them up a bit, some of the big ones. These are kind of big fat guys. Um, we're just gonna cook these until they give off their liquid, and then, uh, and then the bacon will go in and the rest of the stuff. But it's a great salad. I made this, I said the other day, for somebody's, for some people that were here at lunch, and I grilled some chicken and put it on top just to sort of make it a little bit more substantial. And it was so good. I loved it. They loved it. Okay. So that's all that has to happen here, right? Mushrooms cooking, bacon done. The basis of this salad is right here on the counter in front of me. Let me get a bowl out. Napa cabbage. It's green like regular cabbage, but unlike the bowling ball cabbage, it's a lot thinner. It's a lot, sorry, lighter. Let me show you what I like to do with this. This little top bit I don't want. I take this way. I've got two halves. And it's simple. It's just like this. Wait. If I do this, you can't see anything, right, Lan? Yeah. There you go. Is that a problem? This. Okay, nice. You see it down near this end, it starts getting a little thicker. So I don't go all the way down, but I've got this. Beautiful. Same with this side. Like the bowling ball cabbages, just they're not quite this, I don't know what the word is, elegant. They're not quite this light. And I like, I like that. I like it when it's like this. And I'll just do a little bit more of this baby guy. And because he's small. I won't cut him. Okay, good so far. Looks good to me. Everybody's got this down. Big, big bowl of salad though, man. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I look just a little bit more in there. Okay, in the interest of making life easy for you, you could totally get up to this point ahead of time. That you don't have to do at the last minute. If you were going to do that, the, the proper thing to do when I do this, I take a couple paper towels, I get them wet, a little wet like this, and I take them, I put them over the top, boom, and then I stick the bowl in the fridge. Got it? Keeps it nice. The, the moist paper towels help keep the salad from uh, drying out so and you want getting it to be wilty. Moist. Say, hey, what? You want it to be moist. Uh, oh, I want the, the, to- the moist towel helps keep the salad from, um, 
It helps keep it fr keep it fresh. Oh, okay. As opposed to it getting limp, right? Got it. That's the word I was looking Chris, for. Yeah. Okay, so the mushrooms are doing fine here. You can see getting some color softening a little bit. They don't have too long to go. When I used to make this salad, in fact, this salad is in one of the cookbooks, uh, I say to use the ready bacon. I almost don't use the ready bacon anymore because you know what you don't get with ready bacon? Grease. That. Right. And that's the grease that came out of the bacon. And that's the grease that is now flavoring these mushrooms or anything else. Can you quickly explain how to dispose of bacon grease? Well, yeah, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put it in some container, let it harden, and then throw it in the garbage. You're Got not it. supposed to put it down the sink. Got when it. you pour it down the sink, it can really screw up your pipes. That's okay. a problem. Back in the day, my mom would keep bacon grease in a can, in a coffee can, underneath the sink, and then she would take spoonfuls of it and use it for other things. Wow. Nice. Like if you were making potatoes, some kind of shredded potato hash brown thing for breakfast on a Sunday morning, rather than butter olive oil, Little tablespoon of bacon grease in there makes it all better. Okay, so let's see. The other thing that we need, so we've got one, two, three ingredients so far. Here comes four. And this is just crumbled blue cheese. Some of this. Not too much. You can, you know, blue cheese is one of those things that a little bit, the right amount is really lovely. Too much completely takes over and then you're aft and then that's all you taste is blue cheese. Nobody wants to just taste blue cheese. I use a bottled uh, honey mustard dressing for this. Make your own. If you're so inclined, make your own, but probably if you're watching me, might not be making your own honey mustard dressing, but I don't know for sure. This is a warm dressing, a warm cabbage salad. So these mushrooms now ready. The bacon will go in, come Max. We'll put the bacon in here now. Warm all this up together. Just because I have it here and I'm feeling a little playful, I'll give it a little bit more of this bacon grease just to help it along. And then the salad dressing goes in. Oh, nice. So the whole thing warms up. And once that's bubbling and hot, it goes on our salad. And we're almost there. Wow. We can turn this off. You see that thing starting to do beautifulness around the edges? Let me get some tongs. There's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with this, no. It'll probably make a crappy picture, but. <laughs> we'll see, man. We'll see. Okay, we'll give that 15 more seconds and then we're, we're on it. That's enough, okay? Here's how this happens. Oh, wait. Oops, sir, go this way for you, Max. Ooh, wow. Nice. Well, I'd actually make a pretty good picture just like that. You oh. could. Do you want me to? No. No. So look, if you wanted to cook the mushrooms and the bacon in advance, right? And have them sitting in your pan, you could do that. Don't smell. toss it. How's the smell, man? The smell here is just ridiculous. It like smells warm to me. It's funny. Right. Well, you know what it is? It's the vinegar. The vinegar is coming out. When the vinegar gets heated up, it's in the dressing, it's fantastic. So here's all you get. The whole thing goes like this. That's it. I think, what do we count? Five ingredients? Mm -hmm. Super A little bit fast. Of salad. Super fast. You could have it ready. If you had some grilled chicken you want to put on top of this, oh yeah, it would be fantastic. For all our friends on the East Coast, this is like such a good warm, cold night. Exactly salad. right. Salad, are you kidding? If you had uh, some leftover steak that you want to put on this, 
it'd be fantastic. Anything would go with this. Anything. Bacon, mushroom, warm cabbage salad with the Napa that's so much better than... No. Oh. Please? So much better than the bowling ball cabbage. So much. What? Oh, I could end it. All right. <laughs> what do we say? Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for telling your friends about us. Don't eat shitty food. Don't eat shitty food. And when you can do this, this simply, Francesca, you'll get your guy. No problem. Trust me. <laughs> I just have a feeling. Am I right, boys? Hell yeah. Personal okay. Sam guarantee. There you go. Thanks for hanging out with us. See you uh, Wednesday, right? Wednesday. Yep. Today's Monday. See you Wednesday. All right. Goodbye.